Look, look, look. He's spreading it. Look at this. See how this... Hi everyone, I'm out here with, uh, we're on the south coast, wonderful hot humid day here um, and we're here with Riz on her farm, she's called us out to come and help her have a look in her hives. So tell us Riz, when did you start with bees? Um, we started about a year ago and we've kind of just been plodding along, learning on our own. Okay, um, Yeah. perfect. So, and how many hives have you got here now? We've got nine and we've just caught another one a few months ago, um, but we've kind of left that in the catch box for now, we haven't moved it into okay. a hive yet. Brilliant. So um, you told us this farm is mainly lychees, but you're also surrounded by other fruit trees. Macadamia, Tell us. Um, sugar cane, we've got a lot of mango. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So I'm yeah. sure you'll get some lovely tropical honey. Nice. Yeah. yeah, excellent. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a look in these hives, see how far they are and help us to try and maintain our hives a little bit better and give us some advice on how she can improve the yield on her on her hives. All right, so yeah. let's get started. Yeah. So uh, Riz just told us this one's uh, a little bit feisty, so let's get going. Eh? Hopefully they don't uh, get too hectic with us. So as you can see, they're already working a little bit on the top. These inner boards can sometimes be a trap for ants, as yeah. well as other booby traps I like uh, really snakes like and lizards, okay. which are really scary. Well, I don't really like it if they jump out at me. So um, normally I throw these away. So it's not necessary to have that? No, these are very uh, useful in colder areas, but we're in a very warm climate. So you don't really need that. It's called a feeder board and uh, it helps you to put a supplement feed here in the hive. Come and have a look. Okay. Look how your bees are doing. So here wow. we can see they're working very beautifully in the super. Riz was a bit concerned that they weren't moving up into the super, so that's definitely not the case here. That has happened in the last month and a half. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. Give the smoker here. Let's have a look. So when you're using smoke on your on your super, don't use too much because you'll make your honey taste like old socks. Okay, and we don't want that. So now that you can see the bees have moved away from where we want to work. Are you ready for the magic? <laughs> Woohoo! Look wow. at that. That is absolutely superb. Lovely, beautiful, light honey. Um, and we're on the third frame from the outer edge. And it's pretty much all capped. I think we're ready to put another super on this hive. Um, remember, we're looking for about 80% capping, hey? So, I mean, we're right on the end frame and I think we're pretty much more than 80%. Okay. So, this super is ready to come off. Do you have additional um, supers available? Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually remove the super because it's fully capped, basically. Um, and Riz asked a very good question. Is it better to put a brand new super on or to actually spin out that super? So uh, do you have a spinner available here on site? Yes, we have an exception. Super. Yes. So what we're going to do is remove the super if you can spin it out tonight and then uh, tonight bring the super and just place it back yeah. on. So that wet super will draw the bees straight up again and they'll refill again. Okay, awesome. So we're going to uh, take the super off now. And then, uh, and then we'll have a look in the brood chamber. I'm not going to bang the bees off when we take it off right now no. because they're going to go mad. Yeah. We'll look through the brood chamber first and then we'll tap off the bees before we close. Okay, hold again. Thank you. Right, so we just need to loosen this. What's nice is this will be honey all the way through because, um, because there's a queen excluder. Remember, guys, we use the smoke to move the bees away from where we want to work. Okay, so have a look at this. One thing that's very important if you are using a queen excluder is that you clean it regularly. Okay, because what happens is, yeah, all these little bits and pieces, when the bees try and move through here, will get their wings injured. So what you do is you can put this in the freezer overnight, put some, uh, a piece of plastic or something down on cement, and then when this is frozen solid, you bang it on there and all these bits will okay. jump right off. Okay, some more smoke on top. Okay, when you smoke, try and smoke down onto the bees, okay? Because we want to move them away. Excellent. Okay. Right, so now we just loosen all the frames. We want to at least get one frame out so that we can work nicely in here. Always start on the end frame because that's usually where there's the less ac least activity. So there's a bit of honey on there and a bit of nectar as well. Very nice. Remember, when you're doing a brood inspection, you have to check every single frame in the hive. Okay, that's your job as the beekeeper. So we've got another frame of almost fully honey. So I would say we're probably going to have to reduce some of the frames of honey in this hive. 
Okay. Yeah, there are a lot. We're on the third frame now. Now we're moving to a bit more pollen. Um, here we go. You can have a look. There's lots of different color pollens here and, uh, and honey and nectar. Okay. So there's a lot of honey in this hive at the moment. So there's a drone bee. That's the male bee. Okay. See how his face is mainly eyes? Yes. He's hairy. Yes. He's also got a hairy bum. Okay. Like most men. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So that's how you can tell that that's a boy bee. Always look for the queen before you shake any frames off, okay? No, that's battle to find. Okay, well, she is quite difficult, especially in a hive of this size. It is very difficult. When you're looking for one out of 70,000 so bees, yeah. it's a lot. But yeah, you can see lots of hairy drones. One, two, three, quite a lot around here, okay? I don't see the queen anywhere here right now. Look, look, look. He's spreading his wings beautifully for you. Look how beautiful I am. And look how he's gold and black. Yeah. Hey? Stunning. Okay, let's smoke again a bit on top. Notice how the bees again move up to the top yeah. to defend the hive. So we need to smoke along this area here where I'm going to work. Okay, if your smoker seems like it's going out, it's because it's at an angle. Put it straight up. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Some more brood. Good to see. Mm. Okay, so now this frame has got quite a lot of drone cells on it. So you can just use your hive tool to um, to take that off, but I prefer to use a standing knife because it makes it a lot cleaner yeah, cut. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So oh, before wow, you yeah. start, you're going to take it out, then uh, check for the queen, and then shake the frame off inside the hive. And then usually I just cut on the on the line. Yeah. If it's somewhere in the middle of the frame, don't cut it because you're going to damage the yeah. integrity of the frame. Okay, but at least this way it's nice and sharp, so you're not, then you need to also cut it on the line of the wires so that it's easier to take out, otherwise you're going to damage those wires. Notice how I don't do it over the hive. I don't want to leak all this stuff inside there. Okay. Why do we take the drone brood out? Do you know? I don't. I know you shouldn't have too many drones. It's not because we don't like boys, no. Um, it's because of varroa mites. Varroa mites actually um, lay eggs inside the drone cells. Oh, okay. And so when the drones hatch, your, in, your infestation, it, it basically those. hatches an infestation oh. of varroa mites. So that's why we cut it out. Not food for the birds. Food for the birds, food for the chickens, whatever you might have. Okay, and then that we can put straight back that's in there. Second. Okay, All right. Now I'm a bit full of honey. I'll use that again. Okay. So, so far we've got um, quite a, we've basically got only three frames of brood out of these massive hive of bees. So as we move closer to the outer edge, there's another frame of mainly honey and nectar. And then the next frame over is, um, is actually brood again, yeah. which is very unusual. Normally all the brood is together. So the queen has, has had to split her brood because there wasn't enough space. Okay, so it's important that we look for fresh eggs. There, um, just over here, you can see eggs. Okay. They're tiny little lines at the bottom of each okay. cell. So that's, yeah, so she is, so she is laying. laying. And this here? That's a queen cell. Okay, so that's a little peanut of a queen cell. That's a swarm cell because it's on the outer edge of the hive. So they are getting ready to swarm. And they will swarm if there's no space. So if we provide space for them, they might reconsider. <laughs> okay. Remember, swarming is a natural phenomenon. Yeah. The only thing is you don't want them to swarm if you're trying to produce honey because then most of the, um, the workforce, the third, is going to leave. This frame here, you can see loads of new eggs in there. Okay, I can see those. That's good. Oh, word. Look at this. See how this has all been eaten out? That's a um, sign of hive beetle. So let's just have a look, see quickly. Oh my word, look, there's the little bugger. 
Oh, oh there it falls. It. Right, so that's a large hive beetle. And they eat honey. I haven't seen that okay, we most of the time we see a lot of small hive beetle. Not often that you see big ones like that. Look how the bees are all attacking yeah. him. Okay. Oh, how does he get in there? He, the he comes through the entrance, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to make the adjustments we need to make. So remember, you want your, um, first of all, we want to center the brood. Okay, so we've got these uh, five frames with brood on them. We want to move those to the center. The ones that have the newest brood. So the new, this is the newest frames, these ones. You can see the brood is nice and light and the comb is lighter. That you want to move right to the center. Okay, so that's that one and the next one over. Can you smoke again, please? Okay, so these two, the newer ones, we're going to move right to the center. Okay, and then we have the older brood on the outer edges. Okay, now we're going to replace, we've got basically one, two, three, four, five frames with honey. Okay. So we're going to take out three of those okay. and we're going to leave only two. We know that there's an abundance of food available. Your lychees are flowering, the max are flowering. So it's not like there's a shortage of food. Yeah. If we were right at the end of the flowering season, we wouldn't be removing honey from the yeah. hive. Okay. But we know that there's an, um, an excessive amount coming in still. So I would say these two frames and we'll take out one more and then we're going to replace them. Okay. Let me have a look here. Okay, what did I say goes on the outside of the hive? The honey. Exactly. So, we're going to put the honey on the outside. That's also honey and pollen. Okay, and the brood starts here. So we're going to replace the frames here. Okay, so right on the edge of the brood on this side, we're going to place a frame. Okay, and then over here, we're going to place a frame. And then we're going to take one more frame out. Remember we said. So. Okay, hold that one for me, please. Okay, good. So that's one, two, three frames of honey. I'll put this one back in here. And then we're going to put the third frame over here. Okay. This way it will encourage the bees to build out this frame first and then move on to the ones further out. Okay. Make sure to push the frames nice and tight together when you're done. Must be a little bit of space on either side. Remember the wood expands inside the hive. Okay. So when you're putting new frames in, they won't sit tight, tight like the previous ones would because okay. these are still going to expand in the hive. Okay, so then we're done. We're going to bump off the super now and put it on. Okay, can you hold this for me? Okay, it's going to get a bit hectic now, but relax, it's normal. Okay. Right, all done. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs>